Six magical steps, six magical steps to assertive communication. If you're watching this video, then you probably already heard the term assertive communication. But what is it actually? And what are these steps to assertive communication? And why does it work? I'm going to give all of this to, all of this to you today super quickly. And um, I'm going to ask you to subscribe and hit the little bell notification below this video in order to receive updates on workshops that I'm actually coming up with right now. And one of these workshops is going to be me for about an hour and a half walking you through the steps of assertive communication, like really working through some of the examples and having you helping you with any difficulties that you might have. But for now, I'm going to give you the six step and see how it works for you if you could apply it to your life right now. So six steps. Step number one is to affirm what another person is saying. Um, uh, once you affirm what another person is saying, you're actually kind of disarming them. You're having them put their weapons down and really listen. So affirming uh, sounds like, um, oh, interesting idea. Or like, oh, I've never heard that before. Uh, hmm, I've never thought of it this way. I'm like, okay, so I think I hear what you're saying. Okay. Second step is to um, express back or repeat back what you've just observed. So you basically start the second sentence with, um, uh, what I heard you say is, or if I'm not wrong, what I'm hearing is, or what I just saw happen, what I just saw you do. And then you just literally repeat back factually what actually happened, what you actually heard, okay? Then, because that step puts you um, and the other person together on the same page. Like now you go like, yes, that's what happened. Third step is to express what you think about it. So basically your interpretation of what you just observed. So you say something along the lines of like, that makes me think that, or that seems to me as though, or um, I'm interpreting it as, or well, what I just saw means to me. Okay. And then you say what it means to you. Third step is to say, no, wait, that's fourth step. Step four is to say what you're actually feeling about it. Okay. So think about this, your vulnerability and your feeling is the fourth step. And how often do we start our communication with like, that makes me feel, or like you make me angry. We jump right into the fourth step without preambling it with anything. And this is how the fights begin. So expressing your feelings and expressing your vulnerability is step number four. This is when you say, I feel, or that makes me feel, or the feeling that I'm experiencing right now is, and then you say that. The fifth step is actually to state your need. <laughs> this is when you get a chance to ask a person what you want and what you want them to do or what you want them to change or what is it that you actually are needing. So you're starting that sentence with, I need you to, or um, um, my needs are that, or can I ask you to please, or if it's possible next time, would you be able to please, right? So that's when you actually say what you want. Now, sixth step is optional, but I like to use it all the time. Well, not all the time. I like to use it a lot. However, it is optional. So step number six is kind of like a consequence, but it is not meant to be a punishment for another person not getting your needs met or not telling you, not meeting your needs. The sixth step is about you meeting your needs. Six steps is about you protecting your boundaries. Six step is about saying, if I don't get what I'm asking for, I'm going to have to dot, dot, dot blank. This is when you be like, what are you prepared in doing? What are you willing to do in order to get your needs met? This makes you actually think about how really important that need is. How really important is that that other person changes their behavior or um, gets you what you want? Um, because if you're not willing to do anything about it, why would they? Okay. That's why I think the sixth step is actually the magic here. Now, again, it's not intended as a punishment. All right. So as you can see, or if you don't yet, as you try these steps, what they're really meant to do, they're meant to protect your boundaries. They're meant to get your needs met. They're meant to allow you to speak your truth and be honest. Okay. And express your authenticity, which is so often that we're called on doing, but when we don't do it in a gentle, soft way, then we actually end up creating conflict or finding ourselves in the middle of conflict. So these steps are amazing for conflict resolution, for, again, as I said, getting your needs met, for uh, protecting your boundaries, for uh, protecting yourself and ensuring your emotional, psychological, physical safety.
okay so keep in mind i am putting together a workshop all about that and really walking you through the steps by step with every single client that i've ever worked with, worked with at some point in time we always talked about assertive communication we always work through these steps and they work they really do work so i'm really excited about this workshop um uh please subscribe to get updates to get um, get on my mailing list to get the updates about when this workshop is going to come through because if this is something that you're interested this is how I'm going to let you know <laughs> this is how you would find out about it okay okay bye lovelies bye my curious ones and I'll see you next time